you know, we've asked people our space, nobody is going to give us the space. Because it, it starts, in some sense, it starts even before you tell other people. Yep. Because you have to tell yourself first. Exactly. That's, that, that can be the hardest part. Yeah, I agree. I, I had the opportunity uh, two years ago to, I was working at Dorchester High School, yeah. and I was the newest teacher hired, or one of the newest teachers hired, and I was the only out teacher. And so I came out, and I couldn't understand why I was the only out teacher. I did understand the community. There was a lot of church activity. Yeah. Um, but I was very happy to be able to, by, through the students, set up the uh, first GSA, and that continues to run through the Dorchester High School community. So sometimes being out is a very positive role model for people underneath you, students. Excellent. I think everybody can contribute towards this and in the way that we can. And that we are empowered to do that, and we are fortunate to have those opportunities. What is the significance of this day to you? It's a positive in a world where there are a lot of negatives. Um, there are a lot of there's a lot of negative messaging to our youth about what it is to be on the LGBT spectrum. Um, this is a day where we can celebrate, and so it gives them an opportunity to say this is a good thing. Being who I am is a positive thing versus the many negatives that they hear. Great. Uh, you talk about youth. Nadia, I have a follow-up question for you. Um, the question of, you know, the generational question of it is a choice versus we are born with it. And your generation, it seems to have gotten it right because not many think that it is a choice. And the younger generation thinks that it is our one of attributes, what we are born with. And anyway, what, what is the significance of this particular day uh, to the younger demographic? Um, I think it's more for the younger people a chance to tell your story because it's sort of like a chance not only to celebrate who you are because people are a little bit more accepting, especially in Cambridge, and um, it's a little bit easier to be who you are, but it's not as easy to tell your story because it's not like when you meet new people, you're like, hi, I'm Nadia, I'm bisexual, nice to meet you. <laughs> so this is a chance to sort of not only celebrate who you are, but let people know your backstory because it's a very important part of sort of getting to know who you are as a whole, and that's what's really important to me about coming out day. Emma, um, how did this day shape up your, um, who you are? How did you use this particular day to empower yourself uh, to just go and shout out. Well, um, I first actually heard about this day last year. Um, I'm going to be a sophomore this year, so last year was freshman year. Um, I'm in the Gay Straight Alliance at CRLS, which is called Project 10 East, and um, we were asked, some of us, you know, we were given the option, do you want to talk to the school? And I said, you know what, I'm going to come out to the school. So I wrote my, um, my coming out story and I came out to the school and the reactions were incredibly mixed but in the end I'm glad I did it because I mean a lot of people look up to me for like actually you know saying I'm Emma I'm bisexual this is really hard to say obviously to 400 freshman kids <laughs> and but even though I mean it wasn't perfect because some people were mean but yeah, yeah. um uh, Nadia, what is the um, role of a role model, and um, did you have, do you have any role models in your life, and have you look, looked up to somebody and, uh, from the LGBT community, and then use them as a role model so that you can continue your path? Um, I don't really have a particular role model, if that makes sense. It's sort of like, I guess I have groups as role models as sort of like general, not necessarily a person, but like the idea of an organization, hmm. like Bagley hmm. is really nice and it's sort of like youth led. So I sort of look up to that idea. It sort of gives youth a, um, like a message that they can do stuff. And I really like that. So I look up to that idea and I like to use that to sort of take the initiative to do things. I'm not sort of a person who's really like, you know, I set my mind to something and I don't always follow that, which isn't a good thing. but. Um, Bagley is sort of something I look up to to, you know, let me do things not like setting it down because of my age. Excellent. Alex, um, role models are very important for the LGBT community. 
members because we grew up in our generation. Um, we, at least I did not grow up, but I didn't know anybody who was gay or lesbian or anybody growing up back in India. Um, but even coming here, I didn't see any role models within the community. From my community, I'm Indian, ethnically. Um, but what is the significance of a role model and, uh, in your life? And uh, how do we nurture that? Because how we can be a better role models for the generations to see us and follow us or look, look up to us? It's funny. I, I have the opportunity to speak to a lot of high school students. Um, and when I tell them that I didn't come out until I was 34 years old, that I went through the extreme of being married to a woman for 10 years, very often I get the reaction, why didn't you just say who you were and let the chips fall where they might? And I always go back to that question of role models. Growing up um, in the 70s, there wasn't a role model as far as television, as far as pop icons or anything like that. If you saw a homosexual person on television, they were portrayed as a lonely, overworked, drug-addicted, alcoholic person who died alone. And so those were my choices, to be who I was and end up that way, or to try to get by in a straight world pretending to be a straight man. And so the significance for me was that it kept me in the closet. And now I go and I speak to young people about that so that they know that it's okay and they can have role models and they don't have to make the decision I made. That's a very important uh, observation. Um, you know, there's a lot of negativity um, in the news and anywhere, the print media, websites, go everywhere, there's a lot of negativity just geared towards us, our community, um, because whenever election is coming and then suddenly uh, this floodgate is open and they're always going after the gays and lesbians so that they can get votes and get elected. Um, <laughs> um, number is coming very close, but, um, but how do we, how do we as a community uh, be positive and happy uh, when all this negativity is going around and people treat us with contempt and look at us some piece of uh, something undesirable or something less than ideal? Um, as what do you think, Emma? What do you think? Like in terms of negativity comes along and people go with that. It's because uh, how do we stay positive during these times? It's really hard because I've been through that. I know Nadia has too. Uh, it's, it's nice to have someone there. Even, you know, um, like Nadia and I sort of went through a so similar process of coming out and um, I always had her 